Hello, everyone. Hello. Remember ninety nine things, but forget one. Okay. No, there we go. Good morning and good afternoon. Can you guys hear me? We all good? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Excellent. Welcome, welcome, everybody. We'll give everyone just another minute or so to hop in. Um, hopefully, you guys have taken some notes over the last couple of days. Monday and, or last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we kind of started the introduction into social media a little bit more and Facebook and organic reach and those kinds of things. And that's what we're going to dive a little deeper into today. A little a few extra ideas on how to generate some leads organically. Sound okay with everybody? All right. For the, those of you that were here, do we have any questions off the top um, or are you guys that are brand new? So today we're going to be talking about uh, Facebook and generating leads organically through Facebook, uh, a number of different methods for that. So before I start, do we have any questions over anything that we've covered um, or where we're at right now? And if you have specific questions, maybe about logging in or your, um, like your specific niche, we, you know, I do a niche training on another time, but anybody have questions about what we've been talking about? Everybody good? Do I have, good to raise, do I have to raise my hand? <laughs> what, what you got, Miss King? I well, I don't know if there was like a thing I have to raise my hand when I want to speak. I just oh, didn't good. know. I mean, I'll, like I'm here, I think, for a specific reason. So I didn't know if I'm supposed to speak up and interrupt the situation or if I'm supposed to just keep kind of, you know. Well, what, what specific? So the high performance calls are, you know, this isn't like our, our business strategy call. This isn't tech support. The high performance calls are, are built around, you know, bettering your performance, your mindset, understanding success, gotcha. and then a number of other topics. And then on this call, I also go into Occasionally, I'll do some extra training like this uh, just to help with overall performance. What specific question do you have? Uh, I just asked it, so I think I'll just listen to the call and see no, are, things go. But do you, do you have any other – are you just wondering what this call is about, or have you had a welcome call yet? A uh, welcome call with – Me. I do, I do the welcome calls. I typically do them as a group. So yeah, I'm guessing I mean, I've you... had, I've been on here twice, I think now. Okay. But, but did, no, so I... these are the high performance calls, but the welcome calls, they're either 1030 AM uh, Eastern time or yeah. 430 yeah, PM. That's right. I had okay. okay. 1030 on Thursday. Okay. So then um, from there, you should have your conversations with your accountability representative and they both myself and them will have explained kind of what these calls are about. Okay. And then you'll have some homework and it'll be getting you ready for your business strategy upcoming. All right. right. Okay, cool. This is my first uh, time. Well, welcome, sir. Okay. Welcome, welcome. All right. Let me see. Um, on that note, so if it is your very first time, guys, um, I did. Here, let me give this to you now. I'm going to give you guys the slides here. From the, This is what I went over Thursday, Friday, and I'm getting into 
today. Okay, actually, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to post that, but I'm not going to give you the slides until we get further along because I don't want you guys pulling up the slides and moving ahead. And I know some of you would do that. So on that note, we're going to, we're going to dive in. Um, all right. What we've been talking about last couple of days, guys, typically these calls, I'll, like I was saying, I'll, I'll go over mindset and training and habits and we do all sorts of different stuff. What we've done the last couple of days is just kind of introduction into social media. I understand some of you guys already get a lot of this and that's cool. That's okay. Hopefully you pick up one or two things that you haven't seen before. If you are kind of starting into this world of digital marketing and you haven't done a lot of it, then you'll probably pick up a little bit more than, you know, some other people. So that's great. So what we're going to do, if you've got specific questions, raising your hand isn't always going to be as effective. You might want to drop it into chat simply because I'll be sharing my screen some. So I won't be able to see if hands are raised. Um, so either... Uh, you know, drop it in a chat or speak up occasionally if you have a question about what we're talking about. Okay. Sound good. All right, guys, let me go ahead. I'm going to dive in. So what I was talking about uh, last week, we were talking about some different things, you know, what your data does, how to look things up, how to look up your target audience on Facebook. Right now I've done, if you guys are newer to this, I have done trainings on, and I'm going to ask you guys if you, um, if you've got any feedback or anything going on in your area to mute yourself um, simply so we don't get uh, that feedback. But when you run ads or even organically, you can pull up uh, a lot of stuff with Facebook. Okay. So am, am I echoing less now? Is it better? Nods of heads. Yes. No. A little bit. Okay. Good. Yes. Better That's Andrew. Sounded, much better. Okay. It sounded like there was a couple of uh, people on there. So, all right. These are some things that Facebook looks at that you can start to track. Um, we talked about organic reach, being strategic with what you're doing, right? Being fresh, putting stuff consistently. I'm going these, on these quick, guys, if you're, if you're first time looking at this, because I talked about this the other day. So you can see the recordings on this stuff. Um, you know, creating content that's evergreen means I, I create some content and then I maybe reuse some of those same ideas over and over from different perspectives. Here's some ideas, different things you can do as far as content goes, video tutorials, recipes, even if find a way when I say recipes, sometimes people are like, well, I'm working with plumbers. How would I do that? Okay. Well then come up with, you know, top five methods of doing this top five, um, you know, cameras for snaking a pipe. I, I don't know. Come up with different, there's things that you can do guys. So coming up with lists, checklists, et cetera. Some tips for creating posts that captivate and inspire attention, solid visuals. Don't be too formal. Don't try and be too technical. Uh, you want to connect a good rule of thumb for all of your marketing copy guys, a good rule of thumb, because some of you guys are going to have this desire to write things out and want to sound like an expert. You want to sound like, you know what you're talking about. A great rule of thumb is to write this as if you're writing for a, a an eighth grader or a ninth grader in a conversational manner for an intelligent 13 year old. That's what you, that's who you're connecting with because that's how most of us communicate. And if you can create marketing copy in a way that connects with that type of audience, you'll create with a, or you'll connect with a larger swath of people and in turn convert at a higher rate. Everyone makes sense, right, guys? All of us, you know, we, we all like to think we're super smart. Typically, I think like a, you know, kid going through puberty. I mean, that's just the reality, right? <laughs> and, and most of us do the same thing. It's not just me. Okay, so building organic traffic. Here's a good idea. <clears throat> Create a Facebook group. How many of you guys have thought about creating a Facebook group? Let's talk a little bit about that. So, Facebook really likes when you build a community <clears throat> because it keeps people, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, Facebook likes groups because it keeps people on their pages longer. They want you to connect with people in communities, in groups. They want you to do that. Right now, well over 400 billion people use Facebook groups. So there's two different ways that you can go about this. I would do both. Start your own group. Join a highly engaged and relevant group. So we've talked about selecting your niche. So if your niche is financial advisors, your niche is real estate agents, your niche is 
chiropractors, your niches, you know, I, I don't know, LARPing, live action role playing companies. I don't care what your niche is. There are a number of different groups already out there that are pretty engaged and it's relevant. You should join some. Okay. Would love help on beat how to set a new one up personal versus business page. Okay. So I'm not doing the business page here. The business page is pretty easy, but so let's, let's look at setting up a group. Okay. Kind of get there in, in just a second. All right. Um, most people form groups around their brand or business, their products or services, a lifestyle book club, journaling club, something like that, or content marketing. Right. So let's look at a um, couple of ideas here. Right. It's all about customer retention, success and loyalty. You can do live coaching sessions, live Q and A's, personal implementation, feedback, accountability, all these kinds of things. Right now, setting one up. Here's what we're going to do. Let me pull up Facebook. We're on Facebook, right? We're here. We're on Facebook. Now I got to move the chat. I'm going to close the chat real quick, guys. So if you drop something in there, I may not see it. Now, if you're on your Facebook, on your desktop, there's different ways to see it um, when you're on your phone, obviously, but you can do this just as easily on your phone. So you see at the top, we have the stories, right? We talked about this the other day, right? You can create stories. It's a great way to create organic reach with your posts from your page and from your personal page. Stories are a great way to do that. Next, we have groups. And I'm going to click on where it says groups. Everyone see that over here on the left, right? So I'm showing you from a desktop. Hopefully my computer doesn't run too slow. So this part's pretty easy. This is going to list groups that I manage. There's a number of groups that I manage here. Okay. But I'm going to hit create a new group. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to create a name. We're going to call it the Hi performance powerhouses we're gonna uh, if I learn how to spell we're gonna set the it to private we can invite friends so we can invite people that you may already be connected with if you've got email addresses you can add them in here too you can create your photo here, right? So let's say I just create that. Facebook takes a bit. So anyway, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna edit this picture and I'm gonna get a picture posted in here that I either create or I have someone on five or create, right? And then we start, you know, inviting friends, adding cover, uh, cover photo, add the description, create the post. So you can create posts in here just like you would anywhere else. So here's the thing, guys. So you create your description. That's the value proposition in your group. You're going to lay down clear rules. You're going to invite, engage audience members, which could just be people that have liked your page or people that have clicked on and, and given you an email address. You can maybe find them on Facebook, invite them to a group. Maybe you retarget through emails, people that are clicking on your ads, right? So a lot of different ways to incentivize people to join. You can have a launch. You can create an event around it. You can do, you know, email capture forms. You can offer a free gift. If you want to write your own little ebook, if you want to find something on Fiverr, PLR, private label rights, there's a lot of different things you can do there. You can offer bonus referrals, you guys, this is where you get creative, right? Do you always want to keep it private? Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, it depends on, you can keep it open at the beginning. Um, but at some point you want to be creating enough value and exclusivity always has benefits to it. Yeah. Right. But if that's the case, then you got to make sure that you're delivering. Okay, so a couple of ways to increase engagement. Live Q&As, challenges for them, you know, five-day challenge about whatever. So if you're doing, you know, real estate agents, 
give them a five-day challenge who can have the most calls in five days you know first one to sign up or get get a listing or i mean come up with something guys there's a lot of different things that you can do this is where you get creative you guys are all we're entrepreneurs now right we're developing out both sides of our brain that logical and the creative side do both right provide statistics provide numbers provide things they want to see help them get creative as well the more creative you are the more value you add to them okay uh creating a content strategy now when he says when i when i say here user generated content actually drives 6.9 times higher engagement it means if you can get people to add content to it if you can challenge them to do stuff and they're posting and they're commenting and they're doing things it's going to get more engagement than simply, you know, me posting in the group, right? If Gabriel and Denise and David and, you know, all of you guys are posting, you're creating something, you're asking questions, it's going to create higher engagement than if it's all me. Is that, it's fairly simple, but does that make sense with everybody? You can create a designated topic or engagement for every day. So, you know, Wednesday can be, I, I depends on what your niche is, but come up with something for that, you know, different days of the week, you can kind of create that, right? A Q and A on a specific day. Groups are a great way to generate content. So I got a couple of chats here. Makes sense. Uh, can't see the screen. You got it. Okay, Michelle got it. Got it. Okay, good. All right. Now, quick word to the wise: a warning when it comes to groups. We've talked about how much time you spend on your business. I recommend typically between one to three hours a day is what you should be looking at. If you're going to create a group and as that group grows, it can create a time commitment. Now there's different ways that you can handle this. You can be super engaged. You can be partially engaged. You can have, you can hire a, an assistant that will help regulate little pieces of this. Maybe you have members help regulate it as well right but there's different things you got to understand it, it um you know occasionally you're going to welcome people in but you don't necessarily need to welcome every single day new people maybe you create a list every other day something like that but you've got to be able to do that also as it grows when you get to a certain point there is a tipping point in engagement over a certain amount the percentage of people that are actually engaging is going to decrease and that's where you kind of look at maybe another group, modifying things, whatever. You know, and this is long-term strategy stuff we're talking about, okay? You don't want to dismantle a group once you've built it up. There's a lot of value in a group. Questions on that? Questions on groups? You said that after time, the group, it kind of, it just naturally diminishes. It's like going over the curve. So then you, it, it, as it grows, you reach a certain point where a, you know, percentage of the people just aren't going to be as engaged, right? That, that's right. just numbers in general statistics. There's no way, real way around that. So that's where you start to look at, you know, do I create a higher level group? Do I create one that maybe, maybe you get to the point in a year or two guys where you're developing and, and just giving so much value that you say, Hey, for an extra 27 a month, 37, 97 a month, something, you know, you can get access to this and then there's higher level training or there's something else going on. Right. There's all sorts of different things that you can do, you know, occasionally purging the group. I mean, there's, you want to, you're going to get more value out of a group that's engaged versus one that's not. Andrew, question for you. Yes. What do you mean for $27 or 27 or this, you get extra value? I mean, you're charging people money? Good yeah, point. why not? <laughs> why not? If I'm providing you value, like, look, I mean, you guys get this, um, you know, as part of, Blake and I put the, the high performance calls here as part of the partner program, right? This was a, a bonus that was given to you guys. The same type of content I charge people for, you know, in other groups. I've got other groups where I do something similar. I charge them. Every single person that's in there, they, they pay for it, you know? And, and the reality is, is sometimes you'll have some of these customers that will, what I have found a lot of times, guys, is that people that pay you will 
take you more seriously. They'll listen more intently, right? Mm -hmm. Cause they want to get their value out of it. They're less of a headache typically than people yeah. that get stuff for free. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's how it works. Right. We've all got kids. Think about it. You know, you give them everything, they start to expect it. Right. And if you're providing enough value, why not charge them? You know, create a higher level one, get, get to where you can create a, something that's, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars a month. And, and you get a handful of people that are in there, right? You got, if you got something where you're delivering enough value and that would be, you know, I'm going to give you, if I'm working with, you know, realtors and I'm charging them for this mastermind, well, then what am I doing? I'm bringing in mortgage brokers. I'm finding other experts. I'm interviewing people. I'm giving them templates for ads but I charge them three, 400 a month. Cause if I got 20 of them in there, Hey guys, that's eight grand a month for doing the same shit that I would be doing. Right. Can you do a group? Um, I'm sure I'll find this out over time, but can you do, a, can you say like, we're going to do a four week group for 20 bucks, yeah. you know, yeah. so that you have absolutely you right can do a challenge group. Yeah. You can absolutely do a challenge group. I mean that people do those all the time. Right. And it's a great way. So you have your free, free Facebook group and then you could have a challenge group and, and you could, you know, get as many people as you want into that free group. And then that's a way to get more emails to retarget people. Guys, this is a lot of the stuff that I'm giving you is not just selling the things that you have access to right now with the partner program. If you utilize this stuff, right, I'm trying to train you so that you can be digital marketers down the road. So two years and five years down the road, you still got some strategies that you can go and use and you understand there's growth to be had. People sometimes will ask, well, is it saturated? You know, how big a, an audience do you need to make the money that you're looking for? Right? Like if I'm providing value, hell, there, I mean, there's a lot there. So how does that work? Payment, product, participation. Yeah, I'm creating a group. So, and, and for some of you guys that get to that level that say, I want to create a paid group, I want to do group coaching, then talk to me. We'll do that separate. I'm not going to get super in depth with that here. I'm giving you ideas. That's next level consulting. I mean, I do it and I'd be happy to talk to some of the members inside here that are serious, that are actually getting their stuff together to get to that point. Absolutely. Let's talk. But for the most part, I'm just kind of throwing ideas. I want you guys to stretch, you know, to think what you're capable of. Instead of going, how do I make it easier and easier and easier and, and less and less and I'm diminishing myself and my, you know, what I'm doing and my goals because I don't want to create unrealistic expectations and I want to be realistic and oh, that might stop that guys like your potential is a lot larger than than many of you are giving yourselves credit for. Right. So. Okay. Andrew, Next. Yes. I missed something here, um, um, Ms. Kelly. Um, the when you were saying something about the groups, um, what is the product? I guess that's the niche that we're picking, and and when we create the groups, no, the I'm, product the products that you have are are the ones that are in the partner program, unless you decide you want to add stuff to it. But you know, the reason that you would create a group is because you're trying to create an audience that views you as the expert. You're building your credibility. You're bringing people in that you're going to engage with and then continually offer these products or other things, right? Because everybody that bought the $7 ebook isn't necessarily going to buy your 197 masterclass. Why not stay engaged with them and then retarget them later on and offer more, right? Do yeah. that over and over. Maybe you add the DFY plus to your funnel. You know, you got that with accelerator or, or you get other stuff and then you go, Hey, I've also got this. Maybe you come around later, maybe in a year or two, you're providing content. Who knows? I mean, there's so many different ways that you can go with this guys. Right. So, so, if so, you get to essence, that point. so in essence, what you're saying is you're only limited by your own creativity. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. And, and, and that's, and here's the thing guys, a lot of times people, we want these specific, just give me that list. And I think you were on that call. I was talking about on Saturday. Somebody's like, give me, you know, we all want our employee handbook. Well, guess what? There's no employee handbook to be an entrepreneur. There's a lot of different methods that you can go, you know, uh, through and, and a lot of strategies that you can implement a lot of pathways that you can walk. And ultimately those decisions will be made by you. We can show you a number of different things that will work well. It's your choice, which way you go with it. And if you guys don't want, if, you know, talking about a group 
and mediating a group and doing all this stuff. If some, if that intimidates you, that's okay. You don't have to I'm just give you more options. Right. Cause I know some of you guys are hearing that and going, Oh hell no. Am I doing that? No way. Okay, fine. Don't not a problem. You can still create ads. You can still do other stuff. It's just one method, right? One way to increase things organically to engage with an audience. So uh, next, when should you post? Because it matters. Do you guys know that? It matters during the day when you actually post. So the little comment post when your competitors are asleep, not necessarily, you don't have to do it middle of the day. But when is the best time to post? Occasionally I get that question. This looks small. I should make this bigger. And this is probably gonna be spread out wrong. Yeah, okay, good. So what you need to look at. So when is the best time? It depends because we're targeting mostly US, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand. Let's say I've been posting for a little bit and I end up with an audience that's larger in New Zealand. Do I wanna be posting at 11 o'clock Eastern time? Nope, because everybody's gonna be asleep, right? Or a chunk of my target audience. So part of this will depend on you, your target audience and your niche, right? Also, it will depend on age, interest and occupation. Monday morning, is Monday morning really just as a general rule? Monday morning, probably not the best time to post on social media where you're expecting engagement, right? And you think it is because you set it for yourself and you go, it's Monday morning, I'm gonna get myself working early I'm going to put myself in a good spot for the week. I'm going to post on Monday morning. Well, all of your potential businesses that you're going after, they're spending their Monday morning in meetings or in appointments or something else. They're not opening up social media to look at their stuff. Right? So all of these things, scheduling tools. Now, when's the best time to post? Here's this link. You'll get it on the slides, but this is what this link is. Okay. This is a, a full study that was done. I think this is a maybe a year old, but a lot of it holds pretty steady, right? So you'll be able to come here. There's a lot of stuff that's on here. <clears throat> if the majority of your target audience is in the US, 80% of the United States is in central and eastern time zones. So that would be a better way to kind of think about things. So here's better times to post on Facebook. The B2B business is what you guys are focusing on right? That's what you're focusing on. Unless if I've got a healthcare business, here's good times for healthcare, right? Just great little bonus they've got there. Best time on Instagram, because hopefully you guys are looking at Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. So here's when I would do it on Instagram. And isn't this interesting? Look, Facebook, healthcare, 6 a.m. to 7, 9 a.m. and 11 to 12, right? Because I know some of you guys are looking at health and health could be all sorts of different things. Health on Instagram, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. See how it's different? Because the audiences, a lot of them are the same, but there is a slightly different audience on one platform than the other. So why not pay attention to both? Twitter, I don't do Twitter at all, so, but you guys can. Um, LinkedIn, there you go, right? Pinterest. Pay attention is all this. So how to use it, stay consistent, general approach from several sources. Find the one that works best for your audience. Questions about that? Yes, no. No, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> yep. So the key with this, just like a lot of the things, understand your audience. And then just make yeah. it consistent. Stay yep. with that time. Well, okay, so I've actually, we're getting right there. Yeah, I'm, I've got the slides that are sitting in the chat. I'm gonna give you the link uh, in just a minute, as soon as we get close to wrapping up. Um, now, when, here's, here's a couple of things about the content, right? And so this kind of goes with time as well. Let me get this a little better. All right, so all sorts of different things. You're gonna do links, images, polls, Facebook Lives, Facebook Stories, Facebook Watch Videos, all sorts of different stuff. Don't just stick with one form of content. This is like what, you know, you can look at your uh, engagement side, your ad manager, give you some ideas, status update, links, photos, average engagement. It'll give you ideas. Okay. Here's the thing about this though. And along with time type, 
and frequency. Okay, time, type, and frequency. Test it. Test it. That's that's the key. So your times, you know, look, do some research. When it, when is this on? When's the best time on Facebook? After a little bit, you'll be able to tell. There's apps that you can download. You know, like this is when to post. I've got one. You guys can find them in the App Store, iPhone, or on on Android. You can find different ones and you connect it to your page, and then it'll tell you, hey, let's say you've got, let's say it's two months down the road or three months down the road, and you've got an audience now that have liked your page or you built up an audience on, on Instagram, whatever. And we've got a few thousand people that have liked it, right? It'll tell you when those people are most active, which day of the week, and it'll give you that day. And it'll say, hey, if you're going to post, post now at, at 10 a.m. And then it'll show you at 1 p.m. when you're like, oh, I just finally got around to creating the post and I'm ready to hit play. And you can check and it'll say, no, 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 don't post now. Wait until 8 p.m. And you're like, but I've got it and I'm ready and I want to do it. Okay, but you're wasting some of that effort, right? Because it's all about your audience. Yes, we want to do this. And and I want to put a caveat in front of this, guys. Because this is a business. And if you treat it like a business, you can start to look forward to planning it like a business and getting business results. If we treat it simply as a hobby that we hope to get to once in a while and we do completely when we want to do, then we'll struggle with it, right? The results won't give us the same, we can't expect the same results. So sometimes when people say, what kind of results can I expect? Well, how are you gonna treat it? Are we approaching this like a business? Now, sometimes people say, well, what if I'm working during that time? Okay, well, if I've prepped my post ahead of time, Let's say I've got my time that I can work on this at night because I work two jobs and I've got family and I can't do anything else. And so nighttime is the only time I can do it. But I know the best time for me to post for my business is going to be 2 p.m. Well, maybe I have it ready on my phone and I've written everything out and I've got the image ready to go. And all I got to do is copy it and upload it. And that'll take 60 seconds. So maybe I make a bathroom run and do it right then, right? Like you can find that little minute or two minutes here or there that you need to, to post. Uh, David, you would not monetize face, uh, a group through Facebook. You would monetize it in a different manner. You, you don't charge them on Facebook. So Facebook doesn't care. Um, Facebook gets your money through advertising, Right. Facebook's in business to make money. You know, that's we're there so that we can be put in front of advertisers. That's that's why we're all there. But does that make sense, guys, about finding the time and, and when you can do it? And really, if you prep it, posting it, it doesn't take a whole long, lot of time. So when you do it will depend on, on all of those factors. It should. So how often you should post? Um, one to three times a day. More than that is too much. Right. You're not I know, BuzzFeed and certain news stations and this and that, like they'll post four five, six, seven, ten, twenty 10, 20 times a day. Don't that's not you. You don't have to worry about that. Once a day typically is good. Now, if you want to do every other day, but on every day you're doing a story like on your Facebook or Instagram, you're doing some stories. That's cool, too. But you're doing a little bit of work each day. OK, and then you can move, you know, change around your times depending on where everyone is. It's always high quality though. It's all about engaging with the audience, right? Have some variety, post quality content, okay? And then always test, 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 test. Pay attention and inside the business manager, you can get a lot of the info on, on your audience and what they're engaging in and all that kind of stuff. Um, but pay attention to that stuff because your audience, you know, Mark's audience is gonna be different than Simon's, it's gonna be different than Kelly's and I got everybody else, right? Everybody's audience is going to be slightly different. And over time, they'll start to react at times based on you as well, right? If you get a highly engaged group and you tell them what to expect, sometimes you can kind of expect that, right? Okay, so it's a little bit about organic content, guys. There's a lot of different stuff and there's like, I could, 
we could do this over and over and over, and I'll come back to it. Okay, we're going to get back to some regularly scheduled just development over the next couple of days. I plan on trying to get a guest on here soon. I'll let you guys know when we can. Um, the point of all this is education and execution, right? We're balancing that out. Personal development is something we got to do every day, but this type of education, because a lot of this information, I'm trying to keep it. I occasionally I get someone that messages and says, hey, you're kind of vague. We didn't get a specific this or that. Well, you know what, guys, like this is why we test the type of content. This is why we test the time of day, because Facebook is going to change its algorithm. Google is going to change its algorithm. Some of the stuff that works exceptionally well right now won't work as well in in three to six months. Right. Some of this stuff isn't going to work as well. Middle of the year, end of the year. But the overall premise of how to engage with your audience and, that the, and the fact that they are there and willing to engage with you, that will hold true if you learn how to communicate with them. And that boils down to being creative and, and learning about your audience first and foremost, learning about your audience and developing your skills in that regard. And there's a lot of different things that you can achieve. Okay. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, go out, kick some butt work on your funnels, get yourselves ready, get a hold of your accountability representatives. If you haven't work with, uh, you know, Darren and others um, to help you get up and run and launch your funnels, get yourselves out there, start making some revenue, build yourselves or work through what you need to, to get ready for the business strategy so that you can launch. And I will talk with each of you soon. Appreciate y'all being here. Love you. Have a great day. Same bat time tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Andrew. Oh, Dar- Andrew. Real quick, everyone hang out. Here you go. There's the link. Click on that. Those are the slides. I will email this as well. I've updated, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday links are on the Google Doc. If you want to click on that, you can get it. If you don't get it, then you can uh, email and we'll get it back out to everybody here in the next couple of days. Or, you know, I might just, I'll add the, I'm going to add the link here onto, and so some of you guys are brand new, get with your accountability representative. There's a Google Doc that has the high performance calls recordings. I'm going to add that link underneath today's recording kind of highlighted so you can get the link there all right guys thanks, thanks andrew much. thanks everybody talk to you guys soon Bye-bye. thank you bye bye thanks andrew bye bye <laughs>